first snows had hit the mountains in Scotland and today I was heading towards the summits. There was an interesting summit feature that I wanted to get to but the forecast was wild, windy and wintry for those tops. And I was meeting an old friend who was going to do a wild camp with me before we headed up onto the summits and it was really quite autumnal down in the glen. It wasn't too wintry down here and the colours were fantastic. But first things first, we had to sort out our our liquids for later on. We were perhaps going to be needing a wee dram once we'd got our tent set up and we'd been up onto the mountain. So first things first was getting the supplies ready for later. Oh, we need a funnel. We need a funnel. We don't have one. Just gotta be Well, first things first, as you saw there, I got the whiskey ready. <laughs> I'm uh, going for a wild camp tonight, and uh, unlike the last few videos where I've been bivying, I've got the tent with me today, and it's it's a lot more breezy. In fact, if you can if you can see behind me here, you can see the the ripples on the loch. This is Loch Inelan, and that means Loch of the Island. You might make out it's a lovely little island. It's got a wee castle, ancient castle on it in the middle of the loch there. And we're starting from here, and we're going to skirt up through the ancient Caledonian. Uh, excuse me, the water streaming from my eyes. <laughs> Forest and maybe uh, maybe get a hill up behind it and what have you. But the plan is to try and get a shelter spot and maybe head up to the summit of this hill for sunset. But we shall see how the uh, how the day progresses because it's very windy and there's been some snow showers. It's early, early. Well, it's not even winter. It's late autumn. It's uh, it's the end of October and there was a, a nice dusting of snow today, which is great. So I'm with Tom. Tom's just coming at some point and. We've got our tents, so I'm going to head round the, the side and then into the forest and yeah, I'm a bit apprehensive about where we're going to get pitched but that's priority number one so let's get cracked on. I'm going to go meet Tom and we'll get cracked on up the hill. Oh, it's a bit of heather bash in here, yeah. isn't it? It's really against stuff though, isn't it? Yeah. So, oh yeah, it's fine. Lovely little walk-ins and what have you. So, yeah, so we're coming through the uh, the ancient Caledonian uh, pine forest. So it's kind of thinning out now as we get higher up. And there's these couple of walk-ins here and we're just specking out if there's anywhere to camp. And yeah, so far the weather's pretty fair. There's no... There's no sign of this weather front coming up from the south, so we might get clear skies tonight. What do you think, Tom, so far? Oh, it's nice. Windy, it's de I yeah. would say, it's deceptively cold in the wind. It looks like a lovely sunny day, which it is, but it's cold when that wind blows. Yeah, we're, we're kind of out of it in the, in the forest in here, the but forest, yeah. I think we're in for a short, sharp shock as we uh, yeah. head up. So. We need to find somewhere to camp as well. Yeah. There is nowhere. Yeah, so that's priority number one. We're still looking for somewhere to camp. So shall we uh, crack on and find a pitch yep, before it, it gets dark? Yep. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, this looks alright, doesn't it, Tom? Oh, yes. This, this <laughs> could possibly be a... Over here looks a bit flat. Yeah, so we've just walked along. We've been really struggling to find a flat piece of... Well, not a flat piece of ground, but a piece which isn't knee-deep in heather. Mm. And just here, there's a flat bit, but we've had a look down just beyond. And it looks pretty promising, doesn't it? It looks promising. It's sheltered. Yeah. It's flat. It's spacious. Yeah. It's perfect. It's going to be perfect. So we're going to go down there now, set up, and then think about heading up the hill. So we're going to get the pitch set up. Yeah. Let's do it. After leaving the track behind, we headed into the forest and scouted about for a while trying to find a suitable place for our campsite. And eventually we found a group of trees with some lovely flat, soft ground where we decided to set up camp. It really was an idyllic spot and it was really quite sheltered from those prevailing winds. And once we'd got our backpacks off, we set about getting the tents up and setting up a wee base camp before heading high into the mountains. So you may notice here that I am blowing up my sleeping mat here using a bag. 
And those that are eagle-eyed amongst you will know that usually I hand pump this up using these bits here. Now, that's been one of my bugbears about this sleeping mat was the fact that I thought <laughs> you couldn't blow it up using this, but you can. And I've got um, Ray from Renegade Scott to thank me for that because I was moaning about it when we were out in the camp. He just brought this over from his one and went, oh yeah, just do it this way. <laughs> it's almost been a couple of years I've been moaning about it. Pumping up using the hands and I could have used the bag all over. So thank you very much Ray. Anyway, this is a, this is a sleep mag. One of the one of the tips I'd say about this is never inflate them fully. I always have a bit of give so you can sink into it. If it's really rigid it makes it really uncomfortable. So if it's a bit too rigid, what, what I'll do is I'll go into the tent and just deflate this a wee bit when I'm lying on it just so it's perfectly I'm sinking into it just nicely. This makes your night sleep so much better. So yeah, top tip for the day. <laughs> right, let's go. Ah, there we go, super, fantastic. So we have, as you can see, we've got the tent set up now. This lovely wee, this lovely wee pitch here, just in this coppice of uh, of old ancient pine trees. I wonder how old they are. It's absolutely beautiful, and it's flat. It's about the first piece of non-heathery ground that we, we saw, and it's actually sheltered for the prevailing winds, which are really quite strong. Anyway, so we've set this up. It's about three thirty now. We've got. Uh, Around about two hours to get to the top of this hill for sunset. I've taken most of the heavy items out of my bag, um, keeping my you know, emergency gear, all the camera gears there for the sunset. Fingers crossed we get one. Uh, I've got my duvet jacket if it gets cold up there. Uh, but it's going to be nice camping, or not camping, it's going to be nice putting that bag back on because it'll be nice and light for the hike up the hill. So that's going to be next. So we'll, we'll finish off setting up camp and we'll get up the hill. Wow, so we're uh, heading up the path and we're out of the uh, we're out of the forest now and it feels like winter now Tom, doesn't it? It's, <laughs> it's brutal. Yeah. It's very cold and yeah. very windy. Yeah, you can see the uh, Amazing views, though. Yeah, the, the peaks, I'll, I'll, I'll cut to a bit of Fuji, you can see the peaks of the Monroes are just, there's a skimming of snow in them. Unfortunately the weather front's blocking the sun at the moment so we're, we're kind of hoping that might shift a wee bit further south so at sunset the sun might be able to illuminate it but still who cares? It's just nice to be out and the views I think further up here are going to be spectacular and we can see the walk so I we better crack on before sunset eh? Let's go I made the mistake of suggesting that we cut across to save some time, but that ground was boggy. It was, it was energy sapping stuff, absolutely knackering. So we've reached the ridge line here and I've got about 100 meters up there to get to the summit. And you can see the sun's going down, so we really are chasing the light. But the light over here is fantastic. And I think Tom being a photographer is really in a quandary of whether to stop. <laughs> And capture this light, illuminating the Cairngorm massive. But I think we're going to we're going to crack on over to the summit of Craig Do, and see if we can catch the sun going down from there. But uh, yeah, I am tired. I am knackered. <laughs> but what a view! What a place! Look at this. Absolutely brilliant. Right, take you put the camera away and get cracked on. As we gained elevation, the weather got more wild, more wintry and more windy. That forecast seemed to have hit the nail on the head. And this hill, oh, it just seemed to go on and on and it was a real slog. We were getting tired, really tired, but we, we 
daren't stop, we were really scared we were going to lose the light and not make it to the summit before the sun went down. And when we did see the cairn, it was a welcome sight. Woo! Oh, it's windy! So we're at the top of Craig Do. I've left Tom over at the, the cairn there, he's taking some pictures, wonderful light down there. You might not make it out on the GoPro. It's absolutely fantastic and all the way up, I'll just swap round here. Over this way, the, the hills of the Cairngorm Massive have been catching the last rays of light. It's just been absolutely wonderful. Anyway, I'm heading along here. There's a, there's a summit barn here. I don't know if you remember, uh, a few weeks ago, when I was, it was like a few months ago, when I was uh, in the Cairngorms, I went to the the summit barns, and they were quite big. Well, there's one here as well. I think I can see it. It's called the Argyle Stone. And I'll tell you all about it when I get to it. It's just about another 10 minutes walk, so I'm not going to take any pictures. I'm going to get down here and then get the camera out. Woo! Feels great to be alive today. Absolutely fantastic. Right, let's get cracked on. Scramble up here. Wow, what a place. So oh, it's icy. Whoa! Don't know if you can see me, but this is me on top of the Argyle Stone. And what a view I've got down here. Like snow showers are coming in, the last of the light I can see right up to the uh, Glen Enoch and the walk over this way. It's fantastic. And I really wanted to visit this barn or tour. And there's a wee bit of history behind it. The reason it's called the Argyle Stone. As the legend goes, the, the seventh Earl of Argyll, a guy called Archibald Campbell, came up and marched his Protestant troops north for a big battle with the Marquis of Huntley at, at Glenlivet. And they got beaten by this smaller army and they were forced to retreat over the, the Cairngorms and apparently they came over here and took some shelter by this big tor here, because there's not much else here. I can imagine on a wild night this would be about one of the only places you could find shelter around about here. So that's where the, the legend comes from. Certainly breezy now, we're not far from sunset. And the light's just fantastic. I'm not sure if this snow shower is going to hit us, but it's absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to shut up and I'm going to get my camera out and take some snaps before we lose the light. But what a place. Woohoo! Yes! <laughs> Look at that! Fantastic! So I've just left the Argyle Stone. Hopefully you could make out what I was saying about the history behind it. Beautiful and the, there's a snow shower coming in. I don't know if it's going to reach us. But I'm just heading back to see Tom now. I can see him over here. I don't know if he can make him out in his orange jacket. But we got up here just in time, I think. The light, we probably missed the best of the light to be honest with you, but it was still fantastic and it was great to go over there. Really a great time. And it's nice to see some snow in October. Absolutely beautiful. Anyway, I think it's time to get back down. It's going to be dark in the next 40 minutes to 45 minutes. And if this snow comes on, yeah, we don't want to get caught out in that, do we? So, yeah, I'm going to see Tom. There he is there. And then back down. Back down to base camp. Fantastic. All right, sir. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Look, we found him. <laughs> I hate to say it. Looks like that rain's coming towards us. Rain. Aye. Snow. Snow. <laughs> Snow. So, uh, yeah, I think it's gonna. It's either gonna come and hit us. I think it's time to head back down. Yeah, yeah. Light's gone. Yeah. Got an image. Did you get one? Yeah. 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 I, I played about on the uh, on the old Argyle stone. It was good. I'm glad I got up there. So right. yeah, let shall me, we? Uh, let me pack away and then we'll get off this mountain. Yeah, it's uh, it's bitterly cold. It feels like middle of well middle of the winter really, doesn't it? Aye. That sun's just disappeared now. So right. Uh, yeah. Let's get back to base camp. <laughs> With the light fading and the weather deteriorating, we were both keen to get back to the shelter of the camps and we made a hasty retreat off the hill, but before long the light started to fade and it was time to crack open the head torches so we could find our way back down into the forest. So uh, 
Woo! <laughs> so as you can see it's dark now and we're literally just at the part of the path where we head down to camp. Hang on, why are you, you always stand on like a big bit of ground so I look really short in these videos. What? You are, you're, you're yeah, only I'm, you're, I'm down on the path. You're only four foot. You're the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, there we go, right. Hold, you hold on a minute. Uh, right, uh, yeah. right uh, so we're not, we're not far from, <laughs> from camp but I think, I think it's quite nice down here. It was really wild up there, it oh, really was. Oh. And, um, I think we got off the hill just in time, didn't we? It's, yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty black. So we're looking forward to going down, maybe having a wee dram. A wee dram. A wee dram. <laughs> I can't do that. You're, you wee, can get away with it. I a, can't. Wee, a wee dram and uh, some food. So we're just going to crack down into camp, get that done, and uh, we'll report back in a wee while. Yeah. Let's go. Right, let's go. So here we are, we're at our wee campsite. Somebody's obviously been here before us, um, and unfortunately they've built a, they've had a fire here at some point, which is a bit disappointing because there are stones around it. But as you've probably all read and heard, the the fire usually burns down. But we we certainly haven't touched it. We've got our jet boils here. I've got my uh, my chicken tikka heating up in there. I'm looking forward to that. What, what did you have, Tom? Are you just whiskey? Oh, whiskey! Right, okay. Uh, You're on the whiskey. Go. On the whiskey, of course. Uh, right. Of course. So Tom brought some whiskey and. Um, it's actually Glen Morangi. I couldn't find any Glen Livet. I thought Glen Livet would have been perfect after that wee story about the uh, Earl of Argyll losing the battle at Glen Livet and the Marquis of uh, Huntley and, and these things. But yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, Glen Morangi will be fine. No, I'm fine. I'm going to have my chicken tikka first. Thank you very much, sir. So yeah, we've got a wee bit of whiskey to, to celebrate our, uh, our wee trek there. It was hard work. Oh. I mean that. Hard. Yeah, that, that peak isn't a Monroe. It's not a Corbett. I don't think it's even a Graham. So there's no paths, and it was it was tough going. Good. I mean, you don't realise how much of a path helps your progress. <laughs> it was really tough. It was like wading through treacle and thigh, not thigh deep, but certainly up to your ankles and moss, which you were sinking into, and there was snow on the top, and uh, we were rushing up to try and get sunset. Weren't I would we? describe it as an optical illusion. You just it it, it, ne it you never got to the top. Yeah. Just kept on it just going, kept didn't it? moving away from you. Yeah, I was just yeah. We, we'd look at our feet for ten minutes and think we'd, we'd look up and it would be closer. And <laughs> the summit was any closer. Anyway, we made it to the top just in time. Hopefully, there's been some good shots there and what have you. And I'm looking forward to this food. So I'm going to turn the camera off now. We're going to have some food, and then yeah, we'll see. We'll maybe go and see if there's, there's there's loads of stars out. So I might go and uh, play about the camera and, and see if we can get some shots of the stars. So anyway, have some food and off we go. After playing about with the camera and getting some photographs, we headed back to the camp where we set about finishing off that Glen Morangi. It really was tasty. And after a few drams, it was soon time to hit the hay and get a good night's sleep.
I've just woken up and uh, the time is, oh, see, the time is 7.24 and sunrise is in about, I don't know, half an hour maybe, just before 8 or just around about 8 or what have you. And it was a great night's sleep. I think I went to sleep, I don't know, the back of 10 and I woke up, woke up once or twice, but certainly down here in the forest it was lovely and calm and sheltered and I had a, yeah, probably the best night's sleep I've had in this uh, scarp. Probably something to do with there not being a wind rattling around the tent that, like there usually is in the summit, so. Anyway, I'm going to get up. I don't think, because we're, the, one of the disadvantages of camping down in the forest is you don't get the panoramic views to, to wake up to and sunrises and what have you, and I think the sun's going to be coming up over the back of the Cairngorms anyway, so it'll probably not rise until until after the uh, the said time, so maybe nearer 8.30, but anyway, we'll get up, get a coffee on, and yeah, just have a leisurely morning, so we've not got far, maybe about 45 minutes to an hour back to the car from here, and it's pretty much a gentle downhill gradient, so that's going to be fun, so let's get some caffeine. Blah. I soon started to feel the cold having pulled myself out of that nice warm sleeping bag and tent and I milled about the camp for a wee while but Tom was still fast asleep so I decided to take my camera gear for a wee walk up the hill to see if there was anything happening at sunrise. Nice wee walk in here, so it was all quiet, <laughs> nice and quiet back at camp. Tom was uh, was just starting to stir on his tent when I left and I thought the, the light was coming up and sunrise uh, was about 10 minutes ago. I thought I'd maybe come up and just see if I can catch the sun coming up over the horizon. I wasn't quite sure how far north or south, I, I think it'll almost be due east at the moment because we're uh, we're not far from the the autumn uh, equinox. Anyway, it's not happening. There's nothing. There's a bit of cloud over there, and I actually I looked at an app called SunCalc and zoomed into my position. And the sunrise is kind of over the Cairngorm Massif, so it might, it might be about an hour or two before the sun rises high enough to get over those 4,000 foot mountains. But it's just lovely. It's it's nice just to get up here, and just over here you'll see the shoulder of Craig Dew. And that's the way we went up last night, up and round, and the, the summit was just over the back there. And I can see up towards the, the bigger mountains. These That Craig Dew is 848 metres, which is pretty small in comparison to these huge Cairngorm mountains, which a lot of which uh, exceed the height of 1,200 metres. And, but it's just lovely. So I've come up here to get a bit of a view, get a bit of fresh air, and I think I'll maybe take one or two snaps. The, the lights pretty flat, there's not much happening, but I may get some pictures of those snow covered hills, it's always, it's always really nice to see early snow and the first signs of winter, it gives me hope, although I had that false hope last year. Wow. 
as you can see, there wasn't much happening in terms of photography. Just the clouds scudding across those snow-covered mountains. So it was time to get my camera and head back down to back to the camp and get some breakfast, which I was really looking forward to. Morning, Tom. It was a lovely, leisurely morning. We didn't rush any, anything in particular. It wasn't going to take us long to get back to the car, so we spent a bit of time milling about the camp. I got my coffee and my breakfast, and after that, all that was left to do was to break down the camp, get the tents away, and leave no trace as we headed back to the car. It's nice and warm and relatively calm down here, but that's polar opposite of what we experienced up there. And that's just finished. I'm back at the spot where I started. If I spin round, you'll see Loch Ellen behind me here, lit up by this morning sun. It's absolutely gorgeous. Tom's gone back to the van, and I'm going to be back in the car. I'm going to get stripped down and then head down the road. But it's been a great wee adventure. We've experienced winter. It wasn't far off freezing last night either. And it's just been lovely, what a great part of the world to come to, the forest and the high mountains, just brilliant. So, I'm going to sign off here, so until the next time, stay safe out there, and thanks for watching. Ooh, let's go.